So taking a look at my assembly, I can see that there's two sub-assemblies here at the top level. And if I look at the current bill of materials, what I can see is that the model data tab reflects that. So we can see our top two levels and I can expand out the components and see what's contained within it. Makes sense. Now the model data tab will always show you everything that's in there. It's, it's you know, regardless of the structure or how things are configured, the model data tab will show you everything as the active model state um, says. So right now we can see that the model data tab has two sub-assemblies and we can expand them out. Now, if I go to the structured view and I enable it, so I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to enable it. What I can see now is we're seeing just the top two components and maybe that's all you need. You just want to show these two components. But if I go back and I take a look at the view properties, what I can do is say, well, I really like to see all levels and then I can pick the delimiter. So I'm going to stick with the period and click OK. And now what I'm able to do is I'm able to start expanding this out and start drilling down into it to you'll see the various components. Now, if we take a look at the parts only view and I enable this view, what we're gonna see is these arrows because what it's doing is it's promoting all the components. So right down to the very bottom, you know, sub assembly, it's taking those and promoting those all to, to the top. Now, what if this wasn't quite how I wanted to see this? I don't really want this, you know, in this, this kind of configuration. Well, in this assembly, what I did is I placed in this back assembly here. So if we just take a look at the, the eye properties here, what I did is this rear assembly is I placed this into my assembly just as a reference so I can model about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on it within the browser, I'm gonna to go to bomb structure and I'm gonna change it to reference. Now reference is the only structure type that you can do this to. And the reason is, is that I could actually have multiple instances of this and it could be in different assemblies where some it's used as reference and some it's not. So references is, is a, is a bit unique when it comes to, you know, structure. So I'm going to pick this as, as reference and let's go take a look at our bill of materials. Well, if I look at my model tab, Notice that it's no different. I can still expand everything and see everything, but notice that this structure set the reference. So I could have also came in here and I could also have changed the, the type to reference in here. Well, now the difference is gonna be when I take a look at the structure tab, notice that only that one assembly is there. And if I was going to the parts only tab, it's kind of tough to see, but there's about half the components in here because those components aren't appearing anymore. So by tagging an assembly or a part as reference, it doesn't show up in the bill of materials. With an assembly tag as reference, none of its components show up in the bill of materials. Okay, well, that's not exactly what I wanted either. We're actually going to buy this rear assembly. So I'm going to change this to purchased. So now what we've got is that this is going to be set to, to purchased. And again, doesn't impact the model data tab because the model data tab is showing you the model data. But if I take a look at the structure tab now, notice that it's listed here and I can expand its, its components. So it's purchased, but I can still expand its components to see it because remember the view properties and how they're configured. But if I look at the parts only view, what we're going to see is we're going to see that that assembly now lists as a single item within the parts only. So it's saying that if I was to go and buy all the parts to make up this assembly, it's going to have me buy that assembly as a single item. So none of its parts are, have been, you know, um, included in the parts only view, it's just that component. Okay, well what if this front assembly, I made this assembly simply to group those components together, but I don't actually want to see that assembly listed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to phantom. So what that means, it's kind of like reference, except with reference, all of the subcomponents, all of the child components do not show. But with phantom, what you're saying is just that top level assembly isn't required. So now if I take a look at structured, notice that these sub assemblies contain within it. So there's three sub assemblies contained within that assembly. 
they're all being promoted. So we no longer see the 10 002. It's, you know, invisible, doesn't exist, but its children are present. This is not going to impact the parts only view because, you know, the parts only view doesn't show any subassemblies. So phantom is for, is for subassemblies is, is really what it's for. Okay, well, I've got this one up here set to, to purchase, but that's not really what it is because what it is, it's, it's a weldment. So we're going to make it inseparable. And what inseparable is, is for is that you've got these collection of parts that come together and like with a weldment, they essentially become one. So once it's assembled, I want it to be treated like a, a single part. So what we can see is that that's set to inseparable. And if I go and take a look at the structure tab, it hasn't done anything to the structure tab. As far as, as everything's concerned here, it's exactly the same. It's an assembly and I can see its components. If I go and look at the parts only view, again, I'm not really going to see any difference because with inseparable, it's, it's pushed, it's, it's consolidated, it's just one light item, and it's not pulling any components out of it. However, what will happen is if there's any purchase parts within there. So let's take this filter and let's change this to purchased. So we're gonna change that to purchased. So we can see that's, that's changed. No impact on the structure tab, but in the parts only tab now, I'm gonna see that inseparable assembly and then any purchased components within it. So that's essentially the difference between purchased and inseparable is that with inseparable, purchased components float to the top. So if I was to hand this over to the procurement team, they'd be like, okay, we gotta buy this, this, this. Oh, we've got this Weldman assembly in here and we're gonna to have to buy these particular components. So structure is, is a pretty powerful tool because it really allows you to manage how you're displaying or conveying that information to, you know, not just within your drawings, but you know, to others within the organization.